Hi. Now what we've got here is a sequence that can be described by the recurrence formula u subscript n plus 1 equals 2 u subscript n plus 1. Where n is greater than or equal to 1 and the first term in the sequence u1 is equal to 1. And what we've got to do is find the next two terms in the sequence u2 and u3 and then in part b prove by induction that u subscript n, the nth term in the sequence, is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, well if you'd like to try this question, if you haven't done it already, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back. If you had a go, let's see how you got on. Well, finding the first two terms anyway, u2 and u3, should be fairly straightforward. All we've got to do to get u2 is just let n equal 1. So when n equals 1, you've got u2 here. Let's just put it down here. u2 equals 2 times u1. u1, we're told, is 1. So it's going to be 2 times 1. And then we've got plus 1. And so obviously we've got 2 plus 1, which is 3. For the third term in the sequence, u3, all we do is we let n equal 2. So you've got u3 here. That's going to equal 2u2. So we'll just say 2u2. But u2, we just worked it out, was 3. And then we've got the plus 1 here. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So the third term in the sequence then is 7. Now for part b, we've got to prove by induction that the nth term in the sequence, u n, is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. And to do this by induction, in the usual way, what we have to do is show that it's true for when n equals 1, and then assume that it's true for n equals some particular integer, say k, go on to prove that on that basis it's true for n equals k plus 1. And then if it's true for n equals k plus 1, it mu and it's been proved true for n equals 1, it must be true for all integers n. So, let's start then by working out whether it's true when n equals 1. So when n equals 1, what we've got is that 2 to the power 1 minus 1, I'm just going to consider the right hand side here, 2 to the power 1 minus 1, is clearly going to equal 2 minus 1, which is 1. And 1 is, we're told, the first term. u1 is 1. So we can say, therefore, true when n equals 1. OK? Then we go on to say that, assume that it's true for some integer, OK, n we'll say for n equals k. And so therefore, if it is true for n equals k, we're saying or assuming that u uh, subscript k, the kth term in the sequence, is equal to 2 to the power k, then minus 1. So we now need to look at what happens when n equals k plus 1. So when n equals k plus 1, we can now turn to this recurrence formula that we were given up here. We can say that therefore u k plus 1, the k plus 1 term in the sequence, is equal to 2 u k, the kth term in the sequence, plus 1. And that is going to equal... We'll put this 2 at the front here, outside a square bracket, because now we can take the assumed value up here for the kth term in the sequence. We're assuming that it's 2 to the k minus 1. So 2 to the power k minus 1. And then we've got plus 1 on the end here. OK, let's just come down here next. and. We can say that, therefore, if we 
expand this bracket let's just put the k plus one term in the sequence back down again but if we expand this bracket I'll do it in slow stages we've got 2 times 2 to the power k and then we've got 2 times the minus 1 so that's minus 2 and then plus the 1 on the end here Now when it comes to multiplying these two together, because they're in the same base here too, this is 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power k, so we can just add the powers. So that's 2 to the power k plus 1. And then minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And we can see that if it is true now for n equals k, it's true for n equals k plus 1, because all I've done is replace the k here with k plus 1. So we need to summarize now by saying that therefore if true okay, for n equals k then what we've been able to do is then true for n equals k plus 1. And on that basis that we can see that since true for n equals 1, we proved that in the first part, then it must be true for n equaling 2. And if it's true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3, 4, and so on. So in other words, we finish by saying therefore true for all integers, all positive integers. So we can say that where n is a member of the set of positive integers. So that's a z there, or my attempt at a z, and a little plus sign there. Okay? Now if you're unsure on any of these proof by induction methods, do take a look at my website, examsolutions.net. There's plenty of tutorials on there giving examples of all the different types that you can expect to get. Okay?